Once the transmitters and receivers are placed, the next step is to define the simulation itself using a boundary volume called a study area. Right click and select New, Study Area. When prompted, choose Fit to Features as the boundary method, which will automatically set the boundaries of the study area to contain all of the features in the project. When the Study Area Properties window appears, we can enter a short description and select the desired propagation model from the drop down menu. For this example, we are using X3D. Next, uncheck the default checkboxes and enter the desired number of reflections from surfaces, transmissions through walls, and diffractions from edges and corners. These values instruct the ray tracer on how many physical interactions we want our propagation paths to have with the geometry between the transmitter and the receiver. In the Foliage Model drop-down menu, select Weisberger Model. In X3D, this means that all features defined as foliage type features will use the Weisberger model to calculate attenuation as ray paths pass through it, regardless of the material that's assigned to the foliage. Next, we'll check the APG Enabled checkbox to instruct X3D to use adjacent path generation on APG Enabled transmitter and receiver sets. Clicking the APG Enabled button will display more parameters to control APG's behavior, including a global adjacency distance that will be used by all APG Enabled sets that do not have their own adjacency distance defined. We previously defined an independent adjacency distance for the receiver grid, so these values can be left alone. Click OK to complete the study area. The final step is to create a communication system to calculate results based on specific communication network protocols. These calculations are a post-processing step that utilizes the standard output generated by the main simulation defined in the study area. To create a communication system, right-click and select New Com System. We'll enter a short description and select the transmitter and receiver sets that we want to be processed in this step. In this case, there is only one transmitter and one receiver set, but in scenarios where there are multiple sets, communication systems allow you to choose which specific channels you'd like to process. Next, we'll select Throughput under the Analysis type. Under the Throughput options, there are a variety of wireless access methods to choose from, including various LTE and Wi-Fi standards. For this example, we'll be selecting to use a user-defined table contained in a WAM file for a 5G network. Click the button next to the Throughput File field and select the WAM file. Click OK to complete the communication system setup. The final step is to run the simulation. On the main window, click the Run button and select New from the drop-down menu. This will launch the X3D simulation defined in the study area. You'll be able to see its progress in the calculation log window. After the simulation is complete, the communication system will automatically launch and perform the post-processing calculations on the output generated from the simulation. You also have the option to run simulations and communication systems separately. After a simulation has completed, new communication systems can be defined and run on existing output by selecting COM System Analysis from the Run menu. This allows for a wide variety of network configurations to be calculated without the need to rerun the main simulation each time.